Welcome to Zendat Data Deep Dive, where we get into the nitty-gritty of fascinating topics related to data and analytics. Today's podcast is sponsored by Zendat Data and Analytics, a leading consulting, staffing, and research group. Be informed. Be insightful. Ever feel like the robots are taking over? Well, today we're diving into something just as important as killer robots. We're making sure AI is used for good, not evil. AI governance. And let me tell you, just by being interested in this, you are way ahead of the curve. We've got your stack of articles right here, especially this fascinating deep dive from Zendot. And trust me, this is some seriously thought-provoking stuff. But before we get into the nitty-gritty, I was hoping you could help us understand, why does this even matter right now? What makes AI governance so important today? Well, what's so fascinating is that AI, it's not some futuristic concept anymore. It's already here. It's deeply embedded in our lives, often in ways we don't even realize. And as AI systems become more and more sophisticated, the decisions they make have increasingly real-world consequences. We're talking about things that impact people's access to health care, financial opportunities, even their personal freedoms. So it's not just about making sure the AI itself is accurate, but about what the AI actually does in the world and how those actions impact people. Exactly. And that's precisely where AI governance comes in. It's about putting the right guardrails in place, establishing frameworks to make sure that AI is developed and deployed responsibly, transparently, and in a way that aligns with our values. Values like, like okay, uh, you know. Give me an example. What are we actually trying to protect here? Let's take healthcare. The Zendot document, it highlights how AI is being used to develop new treatments, to diagnose diseases, a noble goal for sure. But if those systems are designed without proper governance, we risk making existing inequalities in healthcare access even worse or even introducing brand new ones. So it's not just about the technology itself. It's about understanding the entire societal context in which that technology operates. Precisely. It's about asking those tough questions. Who has access to this technology? Who benefits from it? And perhaps most importantly, who might be left behind? These are exactly the kind of questions that AI governance seeks to address. Yeah, this is reminding me of something else Zendot made a point of, about how AI governance is different from data governance. It's not just about the information itself, right? You've hit on a crucial distinction there. Data governance, it's absolutely essential, but it's only one piece of the puzzle. Think of it this way. Data governance is like making sure the ingredients for your cake are fresh and safe. AI governance is making sure the recipe itself isn't going to accidentally poison anyone and that the cake is distributed fairly. Okay, and nobody wants poison cake. But seriously, this is starting to feel like a pretty big deal. I mean, if we're talking about healthcare, fairness, stakes seem really high here. They absolutely are. And that is exactly why AI governance is quickly moving from a niche concern to a mainstream imperative. We're seeing it everywhere. Governments, industry leaders, advocacy groups all recognizing we need some clear guidelines and regulations for this and fast. So how are policymakers trying to get a handle on all of this? The Zendit document mentions some pretty interesting developments. Yeah, we're seeing a whole wave of AI regulations being proposed and implemented all over the globe. The EU, for example, is kind of leading the charge with its AI Act. Oh, right. That's the one that sorts AI systems into different categories based on risk, right? Exactly. It's a risk-based approach that puts some pretty strict requirements on what they call high-risk AI, particularly anything that's used in sensitive areas like law enforcement or healthcare. So, for instance, imagine an AI system that's being used to help judges decide on sentences. The EU AI Act would mandate really rigorous assessments to make absolutely sure that's fair and transparent. Makes sense. What about here in the U.S.? What are we doing on the regulatory side? The U.S. is definitely taking steps towards AI regulation, too, although our approach is a little different from the EU model, the Algorithmic Accountability Act, for example. That one focuses on requiring companies to run impact assessments for any of their automated decision-making systems. So it's less about the government telling companies what to do and more about making sure companies are taking responsibility for their own AI. You could say that. The U.S. approach really seems to be about fostering innovation, but mitigating the potential harms, whereas the EU is coming at it from a more precautionary angle, prioritizing those ethical considerations up front. It'll be really interesting to see how these different approaches play out over time. But with everything moving so quickly in the world of AI, especially with generative AI blowing up recently, can regulation even hope to keep up? It's a valid concern for sure. The speed of AI innovation is incredible, and it's definitely crucial to be developing regulations that are both comprehensive and adaptable at the same time. 
What we really need are flexible frameworks that can evolve right alongside the technology, addressing those new challenges as they pop up, but without stifling innovation at the same time. It seems like Zendat is really trying to get ahead of the curve here. They're not just talking about the problem. They're trying to build the solutions that can make AI governance a reality. Absolutely. And what I find really compelling about Zendot's approach is their emphasis on being practical. They're offering a concrete framework and tools to help organizations actually operationalize this stuff. It's not just theoretical discussions anymore. It's about taking tangible action. So give me an example. What's one concrete way that they're actually helping companies put these principles into practice? One of the things they emphasize is that AI governance needs to be integrated with existing data governance practices. And that's essential because, like we were saying before, responsible AI relies on having high quality data that's managed responsibly. So it's about recognizing that these aren't separate issues. AI governance and data governance go hand in hand. Precisely. Zendot is providing a roadmap for organizations to align those two so that the data is handled responsibly across the entire AI lifecycle, from when it's collected and stored to how the models are trained and then deployed. That's huge. It sounds like they're really taking a holistic view of this whole responsible AI thing, not just zeroing in on one narrow aspect of it. Exactly. And it goes beyond just giving them a framework. They're also offering really practical tools and resources so that organizations can identify and mitigate the risks, make sure they're complying with regulations, and embed those ethical considerations into their development processes from the get-go. So they're really bridging that gap between like the big ideas of ethical AI and the actual day-to-day -day of making it happen. Yeah, and at the end of the day, it all comes down to trust, right? Trust with the users, trust with regulators, trust with society at large, because if people don't trust AI, they're not going to use it, even if it can make their lives better. It makes you think about where all of this goes next. Like, uh -huh. we're just scratching the surface of what AI can do, but what happens is these systems get even more advanced. That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? One thing I found really interesting in the Zendot document was this idea of AI being used to actually design other AI systems. AI building AI. It's like something straight out of science fiction. Sounds futuristic, but it's closer than we think, and it raises some really interesting questions about governance. Yeah, like, how do you make sure someone's accountable when it's an AI calling the shots on how to build another AI. Yeah. Who do you blame if something goes wrong? Exactly. It really challenges those traditional ideas of responsibility and oversight. And it shows why we need governance frameworks that can adapt as things change, maybe even figure out new ways to audit and monitor and control these next-gen AI systems. It's like we need a whole new way of even talking about these things. In a way, we do, because this goes way beyond just technology now. We're talking about the nature of intelligence itself, decision-making, maybe even consciousness. These are huge philosophical questions, and we're just starting to wrap our heads around them. It's kind of exciting and terrifying all at the same time. To be living in a time when these questions aren't just theoretical anymore, they're actually shaping the world around us. It really is. But you know what? I'm optimistic. I think that if we have these conversations, if we collaborate, if we're committed to doing this the right way, we can use AI for good. Well said. And on that note, I think we've done our part diving deep into this whole world of AI governance. For everyone listening, I hope you found this as interesting and thought-provoking as we did. This is a conversation that's only going to get bigger in the years to come. So stay curious, too informed. And let's work towards a future where AI benefits everyone. Until next time, thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive.